Are you good over there? We're good? You under the table, are we good? Somebody uh, leaning under the table there. So we'll make sure we're ready to go? Okay. Cool. Uh, okay, folks, uh, welcome. Uh, we're, this is the last talk in this room tonight. Um, it's been an amazing conference so far. Are we all having fun? A word of advice to those of you who are really impassioned about the talk you're seeing. It's best to wait to ask for questions and not charge up on the stage and get... <laughs> just, that might not have been made clear from the start. We had an incident in the other tent where somebody uh, called somebody an agent of Microsoft, which is the worst thing you could ever call anybody, and uh, think, had a visit with the police or something. I don't know what's going on. It's kind of... It's, it's hacker history. Um, something else which I think is really cool, which you guys should get involved with, uh, we have our own GSM network now. Uh, what you do is just uh, turn on your phone, scan for networks, look for a network called number 42, and uh, you'll get a text message telling you how to register online, and then you can send, you can call people at the, uh, at the conference with their five-digit extension at no cost. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Of course, you can't use your phone on your normal network when you do that, but who needs the outside world now, you know? We're all here. <laughs> Okay, so this talk is Securing Networks from an ISP Perspective with uh, Bradley Freeman. Let's give him a big hand. Thank you. All right, I'm going to split the talk down into four sections. Uh, we're pretty unique as an ISP because we're a non-commercial ISP. So a background, a bit about Janet and our network would be useful. Going to go through about Janet and Janet CSER and what we do. Some of the tools we have internally for detecting network abuse and I'm going to go through some of the uh, common incidents we have to deal with. Right, if you're not familiar with Janet, um, we're the UK's research and education network, which is really important to note. So we're non-profit, we don't operate our network to make money. And we're a public sector organisation, and the majority of the money that we get comes from the government, so we don't have to go charge subscriptions. Um, so essentially... We're non-commercial, and that's the most important thing, and that will differentiate us totally from the talk you heard earlier by Scott, because although XS for All are really good ISP, they do, at the end of the day, try to make money. We don't try and do that. Um, because we're in the UK, we're directed by, uh, well, we're bound by UK law, and the biggest bits of UK law we're bound by are the Data Protection Act, which states who we can, and in most cases can't, share data with, which is a good thing. And the Regulation of Investigatory Powers Act, RIPA. This is when a variety of government organizations can come to us and say, I'd like to know the person who is using this IP address at this time. Sometimes they can ask us for the data from years and years and go, we don't actually have that data because we try to keep as little data about our users as possible. So in those cases, we just pass them on to the end site. Also, because we don't try to make money, um, we've got a, a pretty security favorable AUP. In it, it basically says if you've got a virus in your network, if you've got a, a significant amount of security problems and you don't resolve it, we will black hole those IP addresses in the short term and eventually cut you off because we don't really care at the end of the day. We, we want a secure network. <laughs> so we're uh, based in eight core points of presence up and down the UK and we run two backbones. We run a 40 gigabit a second backbone and a 10 gigabit a second backbone. The 40 gig backbone runs the production IP traffic for nearly all of the sites in the UK. And the 10 gig is used for something called Janet Lightpath. This is where, let's say you had a load of telescopes in the UK and you wanted to collaborate that data in real time. That would require anything from between 1 and 10 gigabits of a, a dedicated point-to-point -point connection. That's all done on Janet Lightpath. So the 40 gigabit a second network is used purely for IP stuff, mainly going out to the internet. Got 5,500 kilometers of fiber. And to make life a bit easier um, and to keep the users happy, we split the UK up into 20 regional networks. So, for instance, Northern Ireland will be one and part of Wales. So they manage the last potentially couple of hundred miles to the user. In total...